Hello everybody, this is Chris from Wicked Digger, and I appreciate you all watching my channel. I have a little announcement here, basically. Um, some important information I wanted to share with you. I uh, normally would have had a video out by now, and I'm running a little late uh, on the video. I do have a couple videos, two or three, I think, that I have stored up that I'm going to be putting up uh, in the next couple weeks. However, um, it's been a week to the day that I started feeling a little ill, and I wanted to basically share my story with you, so I hope you do listen to this, because it's important to all metal detectorists out there, I believe. Um, last Saturday evening, I started to feel um, very feverish and not feeling well, so uh, I fell asleep, woke up in the morning, feeling the same exact way, felt achy, fever um and it continued for a couple of days um actually it's continued for quite a few days but uh it uh on the fourth day i believe it was on tuesday i decided to go get a covid test because i was running 102 temperature 102.1 temperature and um it was very achy headache not feeling well at all, went and got COVID tests done, um, results came back negative. So I said, geez, maybe it's the flu. I must have the flu going on. Um, you know, it's definitely getting up to that time of season where I could have, could have got the flu, I guess. So, um, and so I gave it another day or two, woke up in the morning on Thursday morning, I believe it was, and I had horrible abdominal pains and um i decided to take myself to the er and i uh, went to the emergency room they did a lot of testing blood tests um you know a few other things x-rays stuff like that and um come to find out that i have gotten anaplasma from a tick bite uh, i am always very careful when i go out digging uh to, you know, I check typically while I'm digging to make sure I don't have ticks on me if I'm in tall grass, in the woods areas, anything like that. And um, so apparently that's what it was. I have anaplasma from a tick and uh, the abdominal pains was from my liver um, being affected from this. And I thought I would share my story with you guys to let you know um, to please be careful out there because this is the most sickness I think I've ever felt in my entire life. Um, the pains in my stomach from my liver were just horrendous. Uh, I had a very hard time getting out of bed in the morning because my stomach was hurting so bad because of my liver um, basically failing from the sickness. And... Um, I want everybody out there to know of basically these symptoms because they can be very similar to the flu, um, can be very similar to what COVID has. I did not have any loss of, um, you know, taste or any throat soreness or anything like that that COVID would give, but um, given the effects of COVID and what it is, I uh, wanted to be sure. I have a family, I have children, my fiance. I've been uh, cooped up in my room where I am right now, basically, uh, on and off all week to protect them. Once I found out it wasn't COVID, I said, okay, well, at least it's not COVID. But if it's the flu, I still don't want you guys to get this. And then when I went to the ER and they said that I had anaplasma, I said, well, at least I'm not going to spread that to you guys. Um, but I'm glad that I went, of course, to the ER. Um, I'm on the road to recovery now. However, I'm probably not going to be able to go out digging for the next couple of weeks. Um, Got to stay out of the sunlight with the antibiotics I'm on now. I am feeling a little better now. Um, still not close to better. Um, I have a constant headache still. Um, my liver is definitely feeling better. However, it's not 100%. I still do have um, some pains and cramping in that area. Um, but... Uh, just wanted to share this story with you um, in hopes that 
everyone might double check yourself a little better for ticks, might, um, you know, protect yourself a little better from ticks, make sure you're using spray. Um, I know it's tough in this hot weather. I know myself, I go out with shorts all the time. Um, you know, maybe wear pants. Uh, the weather's starting to cool down now where you're going to be wearing pants anyhow, uh, hopefully. So, um, you know, be smart about it, be protective about it. Um, one thing about anaplasma, um, getting a bite from a tick, um, typically it's a black-legged ticks. Um, it's not like Lyme disease where you get a bite and then you get a bullseye and it says, oh yeah, you've got Lyme disease. There is typically not a bullseye. There's typically not any type of rash. Um, and anaplasma can be transmitted from a tick um, after one hour. So you could potentially get bit by a tick that's been on you for an hour or two hours. And then the tick falls off and you have no idea that it was there. Um, where uh, Lyme disease... Uh, takes typically a couple of days and you have a bullseye mark on you or a rash of some sort to indicate that you have Lyme disease and um, so anaplasma is definitely a serious thing uh, I hope that everyone stays safe out there I will have some more videos uh, coming up for you soon and um, I'm gonna have a video right after this announcement also for you to have um, that could have possibly been where I got bit by a tick, who knows. I don't know exactly where it happened. I've never found a tick on me quite recently. I've had a few on me. I had one up in my beard one day, had one on my back one day, um, and I've been fine since, but it could have been one of those that affected me and it finally got to me. I, I don't really know, but uh, hope everyone's uh, taking care. I hope you did listen to this video, and I hope you take my advice and protect yourself and double check yourself. Um, have your significant other check you over in the areas that you can't really see, just to be sure. But um, you know, if uh, hope everyone's doing well, and I hope you enjoy this video and uh, my other videos to come. I do have a couple other videos in store that are pretty good. One of them in particular that I did a real well, uh, real good hunt on. Uh, found some great stuff and. Um, yeah, hope you enjoy, and uh, I'll be out hopefully in two, three weeks digging dirt again and finding more history and be able to come up with some new stuff for you guys. Thank you very much. Take care. Hello there, YouTube. How's everybody doing today? Uh, you can see the house behind me. I'm here at a new permission that I have. That is, uh, home was built in 1860. So I acquired this position, this position, yeah, this permission um, from... A video I had a couple weeks ago where I had detected some cleared land uh, the gentleman had behind his business and I uh, got quite a few cool relics if you watch the video I got a little locket um, and a little piece of shoe buckle uh, a bunch of other cool relics in there so uh, this gentleman had recently bought this property and he told me hey I got this other place if you want to go down there and check it out um, so I said yeah absolutely and then I searched it and found out the house is from 1860 and said wow that's awesome so hopefully we find some good stuff here today and uh we'll see you on the first hole well so far i went around the back of the house up against the house real quick and kind of around this side and it's extremely trashy and noisy i dug a lot of pieces of aluminum uh, bottle cap and finally found my first good target relic it's a piece of uh organ reed Right here in the front yard, I'm right to the edge of the driveway and the road that comes into the house. But awesome, I'll take that. Love it. See if we could uh, get on some more relics and maybe some nice coins here. Catch you on the next one. All right, so my next target here, not far from that harmonica re uh, organ reed, solid 60. It was only an inch in the ground. Look at that. Like some kind of pin or a decoration. Clean that up and get right back to you. See, uh, looks like it's got grapes on it and a leaf. This is awesome. Focus. 
there is all cleaned up a little bit and just toothbrushed it real quick but I don't know whether this would have been you know like a brooch type thing or if it was decoration that was attached to a dresser or something but that's awesome I love it cool relic awesome so far so good here we'll uh, catch you on the next hole thought this was junk at first but it is a piece of the uh, harmonica reed now got this kind of in the back side yard along the woods line here and, uh, it's pretty cool I tell you a few holes that I've dug of junk and stuff uh, found some bricks and glass and stuff in holes so um, and there's a pile of bricks on the other side of the house from where I am now um, that, that you know indicates that there was something else here whether it was a little outbuilding or another uh, barn or something that was here but pretty cool catch you the next one so I was getting kind of a mixed signal tone one way and the other. But I dug it anyhow. Because the tone did kind of sound good for the most part. Got this little buckle. Right next to it was this rusty iron nail, so that's probably why it was coming up a little funky. May have hit it there, I don't know, that might have been like that, but kind of neat. It's got like little designs etched into it on the side, almost like little triangles. Sweet. Alright. Another relic on the board. On to the next one. So I'm right under uh, the clothesline here. And uh, nobody lives here, by the way. I don't know if that clothes is just old, but the house has been purchased and no one lives here. Um... I am using the SP24 coil as it is extremely trashy back here. I just found a modern dime here and I normally wouldn't show these too much, but uh, look at this square nail. That thing's a beauty. What a beauty. This thing looks like it was probably never used and just dropped out here. That's pretty amazing. I love that square nail. It sounded real nice, it was pretty deep. And, uh, you know, it, it sounded, it had a great tone to it, high 80s, thought for sure I was digging uh, something decent, but, um, and I am, uh, this is awesome, I love a square nail like this, are you kidding me? It's not rusty and broken and small and bent, it's slightly bent at the tip, but it is beautiful. So, on to the next hole. It's got a nice tone of the 83, as soon as I pop the plug see we have a wheat scent here I don't know the year or anything yet looks to be in pretty good condition I can't get a date off it yet yeah, I don't really see anything but we got a weedy so it means there could be some silvers around and more weedies who knows we'll see catch you in the next hole so the house is about I don't know, 100 yards past these trees and he owns all this land of course most of it's unswingable but I came through you know, all the shorter stuff and of course I got the SP24 coil so I could swing in between all this stuff and I got a signal in here I said nah sounds like junk foil I'm gonna dig it but can you see it looks nickel size I have no idea what it is could be a modern crusty nickel, I, don't, I have no idea. Oh, oh, it's a V. Nice. Oh, come on, focus. It's a beautiful V nickel. I think it says 1910, I can't see very good. Come on. Yeah, let's get it down here. There it is. 1910 Liberty V nickel. Awesome, the back is very crusty, but it might clean up okay. Give it a quick little rub here. 1910. Oh, yeah, I guess the sun's better, I don't know. Oh, there we go. Look at that. I thought for sure it was going to be a crusty modded one. Just barely see the V in the back there. 1910. 
Sweet. Take that all day long. Swing around here a little bit more, make sure that nothing was uh, else is dropped out of this pocket, and we will catch you in the next hole. Well, it's just beyond there, about 12 feet, where I got that Liberty nickel. I saw this tree that's over here, and kind of a lot of open area around here. Got another signal in the hole. I don't know if you can see it here, but it sure looks like another nickel. It's a buffalo. Nice. Oh, it's a pretty nice, clean buffalo, too. Wonder if we'll get a date off of it. Uh, I might, I might get a date off of it after. Uh, can't really see now, but pretty sweet. Nice buffalo nickel. That thing's in good, pretty good shape. Sweet. On to the next one. Show you where I am right now. So I got those nickels like up here on the edge of the woods, and I came in the woods a little bit, and I noticed there's a big stone wall that runs along the whole back of this property, the trail in the back, and his property stops at this wall. And uh, there's a big pile of rocks right here. Almost looks like a chimney stack. And there's a couple little dips here and there, like a cellar hole. And I just gotta right along this chimney stack. Got a signal and just got a spoon, a whole complete spoon. Move quite a few rocks to get to it, but looks like there's some older ground back here. Older uh, site, anyhow, that's for sure. It seems that way. It says extra coin silver plate on the back of it. Sweet! Extra coin silver plate. I have to clean this up real good and see what it looks like all said and done. I'm sure that most of the coin silver plate is melted off, but I've never got a spoon that said that. Cool. All right. Hopefully we'll find some more relics and old stuff back here. Well, right next to that spoon I dug, came right here. Dug the top of a lantern, I believe is what that is. Well, got some stuff here in this stack, so I'm going to dig around here a little bit more, see if we can find anything else. Catch you on the next hole. Well, I didn't find too much else by that cellar hole and around that chimney stack. So I started walking around a little bit, got a nice 40 signal. I've got a sweet relic here. Let's see, suspender clasp. That is awesome. Love it, love it, love it. Take these relics all day long, baby. All right, we can keep going here and uh, catch you on the next one.